Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. Welcome back to Studio B. And this is video number three on the beautiful little beam engine by Retrol. I hope you watch the other two, but in this particular episode I'm going to talk strictly about Watt's parallel motion. Now James Watts was a Scotsman and he had many inventions. He did not invent the steam engine. He had many patents on improvements of the steam engine. But of all of his inventions and patents, he was most proud of his parallel motion linkage. So let's get into that. In order to make this video, I decided not to use the boiler so I don't have to worry about getting burned. So I'm simply using a little electric motor to drive the engine so we can examine the linkage. And here it is. Now it's a little bit hard to see because we've got other bars and uh, components in the way. But there it is, and I'll move the camera around just a little bit. And here it is from a bird's eye view. And this is an 8 bar or 8 link type of parallel motion linkage. It's very intricate. Now let's talk about what the purpose is of Watt's linkage. Here's yet one more view, more or less from the bottom. It might help me to talk a little bit about another type of beam engine here before we talk about Watt's parallel motion because remember that the steam engines were used in the 1800s, the early 1800s, mainly to pump water out of the coal mines, especially up in, in Scotland and some of those areas in the UK. And that was a vertical movement. They were only interested in raising the water out of the mines vertically. So that's why the engines were configured like this in the old days. Now it's important to note that both of these beam engines are single acting. That is, the steam is pushing the piston up and it's coming back down simply by the momentum of the flywheel. Same thing on this one. Now the little Miller beam engine has no Watts parallel motion mechanism and in order for it to operate we have to have a linkage right here and on the piston itself right here so that when it goes up and down the entire connecting rod is swinging a little bit as is the piston. So that's how they get around it on this type of beam engine. So as you can imagine the beam on this engine as it is rotating back and forth it's describing an arc or should I say a circle. So the length of the beam on this particular engine is four and three fourths, half of that's two and three quarters. So let this represent the circle that the beam is uh, describing. Does that make any sense or am I a little bit off here? So in other words, the end here of the beam is not always going straight up and down. It's traveling in an arc like this. Later on, one of the improvements that Watt or other people made on the steam engine is they made it double acting, which means that there would have been a packing box here on the top for the piston rod. So now we can go back to the other engine and talk about that. So the brass beam on this engine is three and a half inches long. So the radius, of course, is half of that. So I drew another little circle here, three and a half, but it's upside down right there. So putting that back there with the center approximately on the pivot point right here, you can see also that the end of the beam here is doing what? It's going in. i got to take that belt off. It's, again, scribing an arc right here. Now, 
it doesn't it wouldn't matter so much on this particular engine they could have built it like the little miller engine if they wanted to but i think they wanted to employ the watts linkage there maybe for beauty i'm not real sure but i'm glad they did if you're interested in this little linkage go to wikipedia or just do a search on google for watts parallel motion and you might be able to uh, have a better understanding of, of what's happening here because I can't really give you any uh, information in regards to the mathematics of it that but the linkage allows the piston rod to remain almost not exactly but almost parallel with the beam or with a plumb line so that's the purpose of it as the years went by in developing steam engines, they determined there's other uses for an engine besides pumping water. So that's when they started building them horizontally. Now when they build a horizontal engine, there's a cross head right here or other ways of keeping the piston rod perfectly parallel with, let's say, the bed or the horizon. So the Watts parallel motion linkage went out of favor at that time so you didn't see it so much but at the end of the video I'm going to show you a lot of pictures of Victorian engines and so on and uh, you can see the Watts parallel motion linkage in those pictures if you're interested so I'm sure you're starting to understand that once they had a packing box here or a stuffing box there's different names for it in order for that not to wear out or leak the piston rod had to be perfectly vertical and that's again I know I'm repeating myself the purpose of that linkage I remember my dad telling me about that in 1960 I didn't really understand it but he talked a lot about that and how neat that is here is a picture of the Newcomen engine now this again was single acting and it was an atmospheric engine but you will notice here again it was single acting that on the end of the beam there is an arc right here and this was a chain so they could bring the water up this is the pumping side this is the engine side so the chain would remain perfectly vertical this is a replica model of the watts engine there you can see the linkage a very elaborate engine I'm not really sure how well I explained the linkage, but you can study a little bit more on that if you want. And let me also say this, that of course this is not used anymore, but the Watts linkage is used in this rear suspension of some vehicles. Not all, but some, and you can study up on that if you want. Let me show you another little variation of it. And if you have any uh, input as to other devices that use that be sure and put it down in the comments I think it would help us all because I'm really only aware of uh, what I'm going to show you right now and the uh, the linkage also there's a linkage in some rail cars down on the trucks that uh, is related at least to the Watts linkage everyone on the planet has either a tackle box or a little jewelry box or a toolbox that uses these linkages that keep the trays pretty well parallel so and usually there's a linkage that, that comes right up onto the the lid so that the whole thing opens but but not on this cheap box but this is related to the watts linkage
Well, if you found this little linkage and this video interesting, give me a thumbs up if you would, but only if I deserve it. And if you'd like a little more information on James Watt himself, a little historical information on him, stand by. And there'll be some still pictures, as I said before, of some other engines from this era. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time. And next time I'll be talking about governors. So long for now. Here's a picture of James Watt and one paragraph of information about him. Remember that he was dead before they invented photography, so there are only paintings and sketches and sculptures of him. Remember that his name is on every one of your electric bills and every light bulb and every light bulb package refers to watts because it is a unit of power, a unit of measurement. And that perhaps is his main legacy. We use his name every day, don't we?